Hi. We're going to talk about interactions among living things today. Uh, but before we get to the interactions, we're going to quickly think back on um, what we've learned recently about evolution. Uh, we know that the process where organisms that are better suited to their environment are more likely to survive and reproduce at a higher rate. Um, those traits that are more favorable will therefore become more and more in the population and start to become um, the new part. Um, that process was natural selection. Now ultimately the result of natural selection are those adaptation, those traits that were more favorable. So for instance, if I'm looking at the peppered moth, um, if you look in this picture in the top left on the left side, we've got white moths with spots and a couple of black and a black moth. Now the background is uh, the bark of the birch trees that where its normal habitat was. Um, they're born with different colors. If you're the bird, which one of these moths do you think is going to be your tasty snack? Are you going to quickly eat the one that stands out or go looking really carefully to try and find the ones that blend in? So the black ones are eaten up and more and more of the moths that are born continue to have the white coloring. But when the industrial revolution came along and large factories that were burning coal and oil were putting lots of smoke and ash into the atmosphere, the tree barks of the trees in that forest started to get stained a darker and darker and darker color. And then as the tree bark got darker, now the moths that were born with the darker coloring blended in and the ones with the lighter coloring were the ones that were eaten quicker. So now the moths in the area are predominantly darker colored moths. That's an adaptation. So the adaptation is what gives it its survivability. Now these adaptations also lead to what we call um, an organism's niche or niche. Both pronunciations work. Now an organism's niche is what is its particular role in that ecosystem? Kind of how does it make its living? It can be related to the types of foods it eats, how it obtains its foods, what other species eat it, um, when and how they reproduce, and the physical conditions they need to survive. Each organism is going to have a special place that they just fit in that environment. So I'm going to talk about chocolate for just a second. Most of us really love chocolate. Chocolate comes from the cacao tree. It um, comes from a seed pod. Um, now, in order for the seed pod to grow, the flower of the cacao tree has to be pollinated. It's a pretty little flower. But the structure of the flower is very small and very intricate, and there's only one insect in the area that can pollinate, that can get up into that flower to get to the nectar, and thereby pollinating it, and that's the midge fly. So that midge fly has the special job in that environment of being the pollinator for the cacao tree. Now, the midge fly, in order to reproduce, has to be able to lay its eggs in standing water, similar to what mosquitoes have to do. And then it pupates, it goes through larva, and then pupates and becomes adult and flies and can. So it needs those puddles. In the forest around these cacao trees are these little pigs called peccaries. Now, the peccary being a pig and not having any sweat glands, and it's in a very hot forest, they wallow. They dig around until they get these muddy holes that they can roll around in. And as the mud dries, that's what cools them off. So the fact that the peccary um, is able to dig these holes that makes the standing water that the midge fly can reproduce in, and the midge fly can help the flowers reproduce and make the cacao, that's why we have chocolate. So these are some examples of niches, the special little something that that organism has in its environment that makes it just right fit. Now, what we're not going to see, or at least not see for very long in any work um, ecosystem, is two organisms cannot occupy the same niche. The reason for that is competition. If you had two organisms that could both do the same job. Whoever does it better 
is going to be the one that in the long term survives and outcompetes the one who can't do it as well. So, for instance, there is no natural environment where lions and tigers both exist. Because they are both big, strong cats that are top predators, if they were in the same territory, they would be in competition for the same food sources. One of them would become better at getting the food and would start to win, and the other one would get pushed out. They cannot both be in the same place. They're not going to get together and have a peace treaty and say, all right, hey, let's all get along. We can both be here. Nature doesn't work that way. In nature, there's winners and losers. Winners get to live and reproduce, and losers don't. Um, so that brings us into our, our next thing that we need to talk about, um, really the four main ways organisms interact with each other in an ecosystem. Uh, the first one we talk about is cooperation. Now, cooperation is particular in that it is within the same species. Cooperation is always within the same species. Now, a lot of, a lot of species have high degrees of cooperation. So for instance, the wolves, by hunting together as a pack, the wolves, while they hunt together, can take down much larger prey and get more food than if they went out and hunted by themselves. So by working together, they all get more. Uh, other examples of cooperations within the same species, um, a lot of chimpanzees and other apes have um, grooming habits where they sit around and as a social exercise, um, they groom each other. They're picking the bugs off of each other. They're helping to get the fleas and the nits and the ticks and all the other things that are parasites off of each other. And this is a way in which they cooperate. By doing this together, the health of the whole group increases. Second main type of interaction would be competition. Um, the thing that drives competition, the particular reason why competition exists is all resources are limited. There is not an endless supply of everything that everyone needs. The fact that resources are limited means not everybody can have everything. So competition um, can be within the same species. There's frequently competition over who gets to be the next mommy or daddy of the next generation. So in this picture, we see um, two deer clashing, two young male deer clashing to see who's going to be the winner, who gets to be the next daddy of the next generation. Um, also, competition. Um, if we've got some large grasslands in Africa that during the rainy season have very, very large lakes. Well, when there's a lot of water, nobody's going to fight over who gets to come in and get to the water. Because if you get in a fight, if you get bit or scratched, it could get infected, you die. Nobody wants to fight if they don't have to. But as the dry season comes in and the great big giant lake starts to shrink down to smaller and smaller little watering holes, suddenly there's not enough water for everybody. Now there's going to be some fights. Now there's a lot of competition because somebody's going to get to drink the water and somebody's not. And the person who's not going to drink the water might end up dying from thirst. So now there's going to be a lot of competition because there's not as much water. Our next way in which organisms interact in the ecosystem uh, is predation. Predation is when um, one organism kills and eats another organism. Um, generally speaking, predators are larger than their prey. Um, and one of the things we'll talk about parasites in a minute. Parasites are also eating off of something, but there's a difference here. In predation, the predator wants to, as quickly as possible, kill the prey. So in this picture, the lioness is the predator, and the zebra is the prey, P-R-E-Y. So the predator is the thing doing the killing, and the prey is the thing being killed. Um, that lioness wants to kill the zebra for food for the pride as quickly as possible. Because as long as the zebra is alive, it can kick and it can bite, and that could harm, hurt, or injure the lioness, and she could end up dying. Um, obviously, bear catching some salmon there. The bear is the predator. The salmon is the prey. 
Uh, last main way that we're going to talk about interactions is in and of itself a little bit complicated. Um, this way is called symbiosis. Uh, the word symbiosis, if we learn its word parts, will tell us what it means. Sim, S-Y-M or S-Y-N, always means together. Bio, we know, means life. And cis just always means the process of. So if you put those three together, you've got the process of life together. So symbiosis or symbiotic relationships are a close relationship between two different species in which at least one of them benefits from the relationship. Key here, two different species. One of them is getting something good out of it. They might both get something good out of it, but at least one of them is benefiting. Our three particular types of symbiotic relationships. Um, first one is mutualism, win-win. Both species benefits. This is like the honeybee is pollinating the flower. The honeybee is getting nectar and the flower is getting pollinated. Win-win. They're both getting something good out of the relationship. The second symbiotic relationship is commensalism. One of the species benefits and the other one, meh, unaffected, may not even know that they're part of the relationship. There's a small little egret bird that walks around the grasslands and it eats insects. And when the large animals like the elephants and rhinoceros go walking through this grassland, wherever their big feet are stepping down, the insects skitter out of the way because they don't want to get stomped. Well, all of a sudden, those little insects moving make it really easy for the bird to find food. So the bird just walks around behind the rhinoceros. Because it's behind the rhinoceros while it's walking, hey, benefit. It has an easier time getting food. Um, the rhinoceros probably doesn't even know the bird's walking behind it. It's part of a relationship it might not even know it's in. Um, the third kind of symbiotic relationship is parasitism. Now this is the win-lose. One of the species is benefiting, but it is benefiting specifically by harming the other species. Now, key here, this is different than predation. A parasite lives on or in the host organism. So um, the ticks that are living on the moose, as long as the moose is alive, they're able to continue drinking the blood of the moose. If that moose dies, they're out of a home and they're out of a food source. So even though too many ticks on the moose can kill the moose, uh, it is not in the parasite's best interest to quickly kill off its host. So parasites tend to be much, much, much smaller than the host organism. All right. Um, these have been our main ways of looking at interactions among organisms. Um, make sure that you're answering the questions that go with our worksheet on this and have a wonderful day.